Hey guys, welcome to this video. I want to share with you this recent article from the FTC and I also want to encourage you to get email updates from the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission. My name is John Watts. I'm a consumer protection lawyer and the title of this article is Overpaid Your Utility Bill? That's probably a scam. So this is from Lisa Lake who's there at the FTC. It's a really good article and I'll put a link to this. And then at the end, we'll come back to this get email updates. So what this is saying is, so you get a robocall, which is always kind of a bad sign, okay? You know, there are legitimate robocalls, maybe places you've given permission to. But if you did not get permission to somebody to do a robocall, they're violating almost certainly the Telephone Consumer Protection Act, the TCPA. And it's a big warning sign this could be a scam. So look. Here's the deal. They say, hey, you paid too much on your utility bill. And they say, you're going to get a cash refund and a discount. And as Lisa says in here, you know, you think, wow, what luck. You know, this is a fabulous surprise and it's really going to help me. And what she points out is, no, this is probably a scam or, you know, even if it's not a true scam, it's a marketing trick just to get your money, okay? So she says, look, if you happen to overpay, utility companies don't really give you cash refunds. Now, the, the exception would be if you, uh, you know, move and you cancel your service and you are due a refund, yeah, they'll send you a check. But if you're just, you're dealing with Alabama Power Company or Huntsville Electric or whatever your city or state power company is, they're not going to send you a check if you're still having service with them. They just give you a credit on your account. And so what she says is that uh, it could be a third-party service provider saying, hey, switch service. Now, you know, we don't normally think about power company having a choice. Some parts of the country do, but you know, there are other utilities, maybe garbage or other things where we do have a choice. And so they may be trying to get you to switch and so I, I like her suggestions here. First one, hang up. You know, just just don't do anything. And she says, never give the caller your social security number, account details, or, well, just don't tell them anything, okay? Because if this is your utility company calling you, same thing if this is the IRS calling you. I mean, somebody calls you and says, hey, I'm from the IRS, I need your social security number and I need your bank account information. No, 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 no. <laughs> you, know, you can always just say, thank you very much, I'll call back. And then you call the IRS and ask them, okay? And so that's what Lisa says here. You know, call them, use the number on your bill, not the number that you received the phone call or that the, the robo-dial voice tells you to call. Actually look at your bill call your utility company and ask them about the call, okay? Same thing we recommend when people uh, get these threatening debt collectors that say, we have an arrest warrant for you. Well, it's almost always a scam, but here's a simple way. You call your police department, your sheriff's department, your district attorney, and you say, hey, I just got this call. Do you guys have an arrest warrant for me? And, you know, everybody for the last 20 years that I've suggested make that call, to their law enforcement or DA, they're like, no, we don't. This is a scam. You know, so glad you didn't pay them. Just ignore it. Okay. And then she talks about, you know, if you do want to use a third party utility company, check out your regulatory agency just to make sure you understand how it works. So it, this is not like a huge deal. Okay. But I thought this was a great example. It's a short article. You can read it quickly. This will actually come in your email. If you will do this, you know, click get email updates. You put in your email, submit it. And you can see these recent blog posts, you know, kind of uh, what, what's going on here. Okay. And there's just a wealth of information on the FTC website. And then you can come down here and, and browse by topics and in sort of a bigger picture than even the FTC is this. If there's something that you're interested in, there's probably a federal government agency that is responsible for that. So if you're interested in taxes, you can sign up for all sorts of updates from the IRS. If you're interested in the 
Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, the CFPB. They'll send you out updates. Same thing with the FTC. So really encourage you to take advantage of it. And, and you know, we're in a very highly political or politicized environment. And, you know, we if you're on this side, you sort of blame the other side and question their motives. And if you're on the other side, you blame this side. And the thing is, the vast majority of the people that are at these agencies are truly doing this in a non-political way. Now, the leadership may be political, depending on which agency we're talking about, but the the FTC, the CFPB, I mean, they're trying to do their job the best they can, and they compile all sorts of statistics and other information, and there's just a wealth of information out there and some really good advice. So I suggest signing up for whatever you're interested in. So definitely with the FTC, do that. You can just come up here to consumer.ftc.gov and yeah, you can look at their blog and again, just all sorts of information that's just really good. And uh, appreciate you guys watching this and I'll catch you in the next video. Okay, bye-bye.